My dear friends, today is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, the second collect of the Akuntis, beseeching the Blessed Virgin and the saints for their intercession, that their collect is the priest's choice, and I have chosen today to do the Blessed Sacrament. I'd like to congratulate Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Nagley on the baptism of their daughter Camille Felicity into the Holy Catholic Faith, who was baptized yesterday. I ask you to please remember in your prayers a special intention. The Conco family expresses their gratitude for all your prayers. Please keep in mind the food pantry. We are having a food drive, and if you can contribute towards that, it would be greatly appreciated. Please remember in your prayers the uncle of our field students, Mr. David Field, is very ill in New Jersey. Mrs. Lisa Rice is looking for ladies who would like to volunteer to do some cooking for girls camp. If you're interested, please give her a call. Your help is needed and appreciated. This Thursday, we have the beginning of the Rosary Crusade. If you're able to help and assist with this, please contact Mr. William Butler. I ask you to please remember in your prayers Mrs. Jean Bischel. She is the mother of our Timothy Bischel and Ann Boylson. She passed away this past week. If you kneel down, we'll say a prayer for her, please. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, mixed women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dear friends, in the Gospel of today's Holy Mass, we have one of the most favorite of all stories and miracles performed by our Lord Jesus Christ. We see here today a beautiful example of the compassion of Christ upon the multitudes. He was compassionate because he was merciful and because he was good. We are compassionate as we're good. A hard soul is often one filled with great pride. Our Lord performed this miracle because of his mercy and because of his goodness. Goodness seeks to diffuse itself, to spread itself out to others, share itself, help others. Our Lord also pre, uh, performed this miracle to show how he will care for those who have preference for their souls over their bodies. In other words, those who seek first the kingdom of God. He promises that all other things will be added. And so, just as you today suffer a little bit the heat, the inconvenience of church, the trip here. Our Lord is rewarding those who set apart a good part of their day to follow him, to listen to him. He feeds the birds of the air. 
They don't harvest into barns as humans do. They neither sow nor do they have harvest. God provides for them and he also provides for the prudent Catholic. No one asked our Lord for food, but his mercy, one of his divine attributes, compelled him to alleviate the hunger of those who have labored with him throughout the day. And like Mary, have chosen the better part. Some parishioners do the same. They choose the better part. They, they center their lives around the spiritual, whether it be here or their prayers at home. They center their lives around those prayers rather than centering the prayers around their lives. No one asked our Lord to change the wine, the water into wine at the marriage feast either. But he did. They did not ask him to feed the multitudes today, but he did. This is the second multiplication of fishes and loaves. He then blessed them, commanded them to sit down. Ever since the fall of Adam, the divine wrath had been born upon mankind and even further upon creation. Man was made by God and thus subject to God. God made creation. He saved man for the last. And all creation was to be subject to man as long as he was good. But when men rebelled against and revolted against Almighty God, after the disobedience of Adam and Eve, all creation revolted against man. That's why parents at times have difficulty with the obedience of their children, the disobedience, I should say, of their children. They too have fallen prey to the effects of Adam and Eve's sin. Animals became wild. They would flee each other before there was peace and harmony in the garden. They would fight with each other. There developed that day prey and predator. Animals would actually eat other animals now. Plants also would lose their bountiful harvest, which was natural to them. Now they would have to be cultivated with, blood, with sweat and labor. Some plants would become poisonous, like hemlock and others. Some would yield thorns, like the rose and the thistle. The elements which before had the purpose created by God to invigorate the body would now freeze the body with frostbite, would now burn the body with sunburn. The devil too, since the fall of Adam and Eve, would use the things of this earth creation, the beautiful creation of God, to destroy the human soul, to lead men to their eternal ruin. Some men make their own ruin by excessive work, by excessive recreations, by excessive natural good deeds, neglecting their soul. Neglecting the supernatural grace which must flow into the soul and inundate it, inebriate the soul. Satan was conquered, but he was not slain. God did not leave men in the state that they dropped to after Adam's sin. But he once again gave them the power of saving their own souls. He came to this earth 
and he broke the chains of all the slaves of Satan by his cross, by his death on the cross. God warns us that Satan goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. In the Garden of Eden, Satan used the forbidden fruit to trick Adam and Eve, to distract them from God's holy law. He now uses the material things of the earth to distract mankind. Bishop Mendez said when Puerto Rico was poor, there were many vocations. When they became wealthy, they had few. Archbishop Lefebvre reminded us in Connecticut one conference, when America was poor, there were many vocations. When she became wealthy, there were few, because the people paid more attention to their human desires than they did their spiritual aspirations. However, God gave a counter power to the apostles, of the bishops, and to the priests. And this power would be to make material things holy by a consecration or a blessing of them. Our Lord said to St. Peter, and this referred not only to the power of forgiving sins, but to more. Whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever thou shalt loosen on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Old Testament, the priests of the Old Testament had to consecrate their whole families. All the Jews consecrated their firstborn. The priests had to consecrate wife and ch children and possessions to Almighty God. In the New Testament, the priest blesses your children. He blesses you. He turns around at the altar just before the communion. He says the miseriatur, and he gives you a blessing. And this blessing can remove from your soul venial sin. That is why you only have to confess mortal sins in the confessional, because your own good works, supernatural good works, the blessings which you may receive, the sacraments which you may receive, Wipe away venial sin. A blessing is a prayer of the church used by the priest to have for good and holy purposes the material treasures that God has permitted us to accumulate. What good are they? What good are blessings? Well, they help preserve us and liberate us from the influence of Satan. Secondly, they forgive us our venial sins, as I just mentioned. Thirdly, these blessings impart graces upon the souls of the recipient. And fourthly, they keep in mind, they remind us of our purpose for existence, to gain heaven the religious direction that we must have in our lives. That's why you should often bless yourselves with holy water. It's made available to you as you enter the church. I'm sure you have holy water fonts at the entrance of your home, perhaps even your bedrooms, as you enter in for the night. The devil really dislikes it when we bless ourselves. These blessings derive their force, their power, from the three sources. The principal source is the merits of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. The secondary source is the virtues of the priest himself. And the third is your own disposition. We use holy water. We use salt to bless the holy water. Holy water is most universal. Holy water is necessary for all life. 
and salt cures. You can put it on wounds. It may hurt, but it cures. And this is symbolic of what the holy water does for the soul. My dear friends, we are blessed in this country to have the Blessed Virgin Mary as our patroness. We call Jerusalem, we call Judea, the Holy Land, because of the presence of the Holy Family. As long as we keep our Lord and Our Lady in our lives, in our parish, in our country, for us, our homes will be a Holy Land and blessed by Almighty God. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.